And let's meet our Toyota opening drive panel. WQAM radio host extraordinaire Jared Schwartz and sports attorney Rick Davis. Thank you both for joining me. That music again, only one thing. Packers win Super Bowl 45. Green Bay moving up the list of all-time Super Bowl wins. They now got four, two back of the Steelers, including the pre-Super Bowl era. The Packs have an NFL best 13 championships. Hey guys, Aaron Rodgers is the Super Bowl MVP. Where does he rank in the discussion with the likes of Brady, Manning, and others? Rick, I don't think he's there yet. The, the body of work is not there. He started for three years, and they've been great. He's thrown for 4,000 yards and led his team to a Super Bowl victory all on the road. Certainly impressive. Manning's done it for 13 years. Brady's done it for 11 years. He's not there just yet, I don't think. No, I agree. I agree. He's only, uh, he was been in the league for six years, only started three. You know, Peyton Manning has started every game for the Indianapolis Colts for the last 13 years, every game that he's been in the league. Uh, and, uh, yeah, three years, I don't think you can say the three years that uh, Rodgers has puts him up with, uh, with Brady and Manning just yet, but he's, he's had a great start in a super year for him. Hey, but speaking of longevity and durability, I heard a vicious rumor that Jared Schwartz was on the injured reserve list for uh, touring his ACL <laughs> in a dodgeball league. Is that correct? Hardcore sport, Rick, but I'm off IR and back on Beyond the Game. And oh, it's wonderful. Boy, that's <laughs> exciting for us, by the way. Some Vegas bookmakers say the Packers are the favorites to win the Super Bowl next year, followed closely by the Patriots and the Steelers. What odds do you guys give the Dolphins? I think the Dolphins, uh, the, the main thing that I see, Rick, and the difference between the teams that have a chance to go to the Super Bowl and what the Dolphins have is a quarterback position. The Dolphins have to get consistent play out of that position. They haven't done it, and until they get there, you know, I see them as being a, a middle-of-the-pack team in the NFL. Rick, I, I totally agree with you. Chad Henney, uh, he's not the answer, and the Dolphins certainly have proved that by taking him out at the end of the season. Now they're going to go in a whole different direction. They have off-season problems, Tony Sperano's situation, Stephen Ross, everything going on there. They're a mess right now, and overall, talent-wise, they're in the bottom third of the league on the outside of the playoffs looking in. Yeah, every time I see that interception, and there are a lot of them to choose from, I, I thought we were over it. Let's get to the next season, right? <laughs> but lots of issues Super Bowl week, the weather, taxi strike, and ticket gate. 400 fans couldn't be seated because their temporary seats weren't up to code. And the NFL offering a make good of one free transferable ticket to next year's Super Bowl and a cash payment of 2400 bucks or one free non-transferable ticket to a future Super Bowl plus round trip airfare and hotel accommodations provided by the NFL. How embarrassed should the league be? They have to be very embarrassed about this, Rick. This is the biggest game in sports on the biggest stage, and you don't check these things before you go into your the Super Bowl? I mean, it's completely unbelievable. The make good package is okay. They had to do it, but these are fans of the Steelers. These are fans of the Packers. They may never get the opportunity to see their team on the biggest stage ever again. Yeah, and it's, it's bad, Rick, but you know now we've got a lawyer coming out, and he's filed a class action lawsuit against the NFL and the Cowboys looking for $5 million in damages. Wow. And he says that you know he's got a thousand people that are going to join in the class action. You know, typical attorney situation. Now, I'm an attorney, so I can say this. So you know, the league obviously didn't want something like this to happen. But these kind of things do happen, and uh, I think the league is making an effort to make it right. And uh, you know, hopefully, they can, everybody can just kind of get about their business. Well, you're a rational attorney, and hopefully, that distinguishes us and, and me too. <laughs> and I will tell you, having been there, the weather was absolutely unprecedented and cataclysmic. And I think you would well, find that history would, would that see that. Was that the NFL's fault, though? They can't control the weather. They can control those seats. That's though. exactly well, and they but can they, control the site, too. But they certainly can't control the construction delays, and they might have been able to do some things about it. I think, hopefully, history ought to be kind to Jerry Jones and the Cowboys, right. but not right now. Right. Speaking of embarrassing, though, the mm -hmm. national anthem. Them. Christina Aguilera flubbed it. We saw Roseanne's version earlier. Is Christina getting too much criticism or not? I think she is. You know, hey, at least she wasn't lip syncing it. I mean, gee, we know she was actually singing it because she messed up. Most people, though, if uh, Rick, you were at the game, and I don't know if you picked up on it when she did it. I kind of thought when I heard it, that didn't sound really right. But, uh, yeah, I think people, are, I'm not a big fan of hers, but I think people are making way too much out of it. Yeah, Jared, it, five seconds. Yeah, too much or not? Yeah, it's overkill right now. Too much criticism, but 24-hour news cycle, it's going to be there. Right. Yeah, right. you got to remember the words, though. Super Bowl 45. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Not only the most watched Super Bowl of all.